Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Acadia Gurney and I'm going to be a first year middle school math teacher in Colorado. I am taking you along with me um, of creating our own resources. So with the last couple of videos I've showed you how to create your own matching activities, how to make them digital, and then how to make task cards digital. So today we're going to be looking at making a maze for our students to do and then in the next video I'll show you how we can take our maze and make it digital. So to start out, we're just gonna open up a brand new PowerPoint and it's gonna be blank. And then we're gonna change the slide slide um, under design. It's gonna be portrait seven and a half by 10, maximize. We're gonna get rid of these two. And if I'm going a little fast, um, you can always go back and look at my other videos. Um, there I go a lot slower when creating um, this first part. So now I'm just creating my name, date, and period, header, and then I make that in the font that I like. And again, I will always link the fonts that I use down below so you guys can use them and all of the ones that I use are free, which is really nice. Um, all right, so that's looking good and then I'm going to insert another text box and then I'm going to just call this template maze so then if you were actually using this you could call it you know adding and subtracting rational numbers um template um goodness I cannot spell today okay so I always like to do the maze in my um mg objectives font and then that one has to be a lot bigger. It automatically defaults to be pretty small. Um, and then the template, I'm gonna just make the KG, sorry, not sorry. So then I'm gonna make all of these bigger. And then I'm also gonna center it. So now that that's big, I can center it and I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Another thing that I really like to do is with that text box, you can go to format and then shape fill. And then you can always put in like a little bit of a background. So if maybe um, you want to do uh, pink as kind of activities and then green as worksheets, um, red as tests, like that sort of thing, you can kind of use this to color co uh, coordinate as well, which I think is cool. So now we've actually made it kind of the, the template portion and now we're going to get into actually creating the maze. And so to start out with that, we're going to insert a rectangle and this is going to be our starting point. So you can make the rectangles as big or small as you want. Just the bigger you make them, the less you'll have on there. So if you only want students to maybe do four questions, you can make the rectangles pretty big or if you want them to do more, you can make them smaller. Um, the smaller you make it, the kind of more overwhelming it is to look at it. So that's just something to keep in mind. I'm going to do no fill, outline, Wait, I'm going to make these a little bit bigger and then I'm going to just make them black. All right, so that's our first one. I think I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. I think I'm going to make it um, probably like a three by three. Um, now I'm going to insert a text box and I'm going to just say start so students know, okay, this is where I need to start. All righty, make that a little bit bigger, make it easier to read. <laughs> Okay, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, paste this three times and make sure that three of them will fit evenly spaced. And so again, if you can see the red lines on the computer right now, that kind of shows you if everything's spaced evenly. So you always want to make sure um, right there, there was the arrows. You always want to make sure that everything's spaced nicely. Um, just so everything looks good. So now I'm just copying all three of these boxes and I'm gonna copy and paste. And since we do it this way, now we don't have to worry about them not being even. So since I'm only doing three by three, I can leave a little bit of space between everything. Um, and so as you can see, those arrows pop up again on the right, which means they're spaced. So that's great. And then I'm gonna copy this. And then this is gonna be my end. All right, and then I want that one there. 
I'm gonna move this over a tiny bit. Okay, so this is a good start to our maze so far. So now we wanna start putting in arrows um, because the way that this is gonna be working is, um, what is negative six plus 10 equal to? And then one of our, um, one of our arrows would be pointing down here and say that could be um, negative four. And then this arrow would be positive four. And then students would pick this one because that's the correct answer. So that's kind of what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna leave this in here just so you all can get an idea of, kind of what I'm doing. And then again, I'm gonna just format everything the same and make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so now this is where we need to insert our arrows. Um, so you can use these arrows right here, or you can use these block arrows. I use the block arrows because then they're a little bit fatter. So then you can write your answer in between the arrows. And so it almost looks like it's a text box with the, the answers in there. So I think those look really cool. So I'm going to just use that one. And so see how I can make it a lot wider. Um, and then I can even make it a little bit shorter. And then we can make the shape fill. We want to do no fill because we're going to be adding in text box. So I want to make sure our text shows up. So no fill, shape outline. I'm going to do black again. And then I'm going to make it the width. I'm going to just do it like that. Um, you know what? I think I'm actually going to change the fill to be white just so then you can actually see the arrow um, here. When we have no fill, you can still see this line right here, which I don't really like. So I'm going to actually change it to white. Um, and then we should be good to go there. So now we can just go ahead and copy this one a couple times. So I'm gonna just put them on all of these right here. And again, I'm gonna do the whole, and I'm gonna just move them down and then I'm gonna just delete that one because I had already done it. But I think this way really makes it a lot easier and then you know everything's in the same position, which is really cool. Okay, so now we have those ones. So now we're gonna wanna put arrows in between all of these as well. So insert shape, we're gonna use the block arrows again. Now we're using this one. Um, another way you can do it is, so you can enter this one in like that, okay? Or what you can also do is copy this, paste it, move it up and then rotate it. The nice thing about this one is then you know they're all gonna be the same size as everything. Um, so that's nice, so I'm gonna just do it that way. So I'm gonna just keep copying and pasting and then so once you get the hang of this um to create these mazes they really don't take that long the first time i took it or created one it took quite a while and you know we're already only a couple minutes in and we're almost done um another thing that you can do as well is i'm gonna fix a couple of these okay another thing you can do as well as add diagonal arrows um to maybe make it a little more complex and give uh, students three options so that's totally something you can do um one of the things that i don't love about this maze is this last this box right here only gives you one answer and the same with this one is it only gives you one answer to the end so that's something you can think about you can also put in maybe a diagonal here and then have them go in that way um so that's just something to think about and what i always like to go back and do is just make sure each box has two arrows coming out of it. So this box right here has two arrows. This one has two arrows. So this one only has one. So that's probably where I would put a diagonal one. So I'll show you what I mean. So then here, I probably wrote, oops, probably rotate this one up just because then if you do make this an option, then there's only one answer. So then there's not a lot to do with that. So that one has two. Again, this one only has one, so you can maybe, I'll put one more like that. And then I'd probably not have this be the answer, one that like that's the final one. I wouldn't make that be the path just because there's that last answer. I'd probably have it maybe go this way, this way, that way, that sort of thing. Okay, so now that we have that, I'll show you what we would do for our answers as well. So I'm gonna just copy this text box 
and then this answer we're going to say negative four. So we're going to say that could be, oops, that could be one of the answers, negative four. Okay, and I'm going to paste that and then, so that is the only thing that's a little annoying about um, creating this is stuff does move around a lot and you can group things, but I just prefer to do it this way. So what is, so that's one, one way and then we would keep going and keep creating questions and then answers to have them go that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this um, and then I'm gonna delete this right here. Okay, so actually I'm gonna delete this site as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you as well is a way that you can save these to make them actual templates. And what that means is you'll save this as, um, so we're gonna export it, change file type. Right here it says template, starting point for a new presentation. So I'm gonna click that, and then I'm gonna call this maze 10 template. I'm gonna call it YouTube just cause I have another one as well. So now this is saved as just my maze template YouTube, okay. So this is my template. So this is just kind of the rough idea of how I would use it. So say I'm done with that, but say I actually want to create my own template right now. So I would go to where it's saved, which is just on my desktop. Um, so right here, and I'm going to just click it and open it and look It automatically just takes me to a brand new presentation. So now it's in presentation three. So now I can edit this one, adding and Tracking integers maze. So now this will automatically open me up into a brand new presentation where I can start editing it and it won't mess with my template at all. So I think that's a really, really cool feature. So say that this is um, actually what I want to be using to create my adding and subtracting integers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, we already created one of the starting points. So I'm going to take you along for a couple more minutes and show you how to continue doing that. And then I'm probably going to stop it, finish the, the maze, and then show you the end product as well. So again, we're going to go insert text box. Um, what is 10 minus um, 6 equal to, and then make that the format I like. So again, this is kind of what we've already done, but I'm gonna just walk you through it one more time. And I do create a new text box each time. Um, so usually the way I start these is I actually just do the questions first. Um, just because I think it's easier to just come up with questions and then do the answers later on. Okay, so again, this one only had one of the arrows coming out. So I would probably put this one here as well. So that's something, once you have your template, you'll be good to go. And I don't know how to go back and edit that original template. So you might have to just remember each time that you need to include that again. But I think that should be all of them. That we that I forgot to do. Okay, so I have those first questions, and then let's start putting in our answers, and then I'll pause this and then show you how to do that. So four is our answer here. But then let's maybe copy and paste and then maybe make it negative four. And then you will have to do a lot of resizing. Um, so then say I want students to go down on this one. So that would be positive two here. Um, and then we'll say okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording here and just finish this up. Um, just so you all don't have to watch me um, 
do this and then I will show you the end product and kind of how I would make my answer key as well. Okay, so I went ahead and got my maze completed. So I just filled out each of the little boxes. So for this one right here, I did just go ahead and write, come see me. Um, because the way that they would get that one is if they got a couple of them incorrect back to back. Um, and so I just figured that would be, that could be something that you could incorporate into your um, mazes as well, or go back and look at your notes or, um, uh, I don't know, come ask me a question, like that sort of thing that you can incorporate in case of maybe students are repeatedly getting the answers incorrect, that you might want to come back and maybe reteach them um, or pull a small group and talk to them and kind of just reteach as well. Um, so that's something I incorporated. Um, and then that was just our final one. It does have the correct answer right here. So I, um, there's only one answer, I mean. And so I think the way I would probably do that is make sure I include a recording sheet where I make students show all of their work just to make sure they actually understand it instead of they just, they got to this point and they automatically knew the answer was zero because that was the only option. Um, so that one you could always say for this box, um, show me how to solve this problem using two different ways, right? Because the way I would teach this is probably with a number line and then um, two color counter models. So maybe um, once you're done with this, um, show me how to solve negative two minus uh, negative two using two different ways or um, with two sentences, that sort of thing. So you can incorporate that as well to make sure they actually understand. The last thing um, that you will wanna do is include directions. So again, that would probably be where you would say, okay, do you want them to show work? Do you want them to use a recording sheet? Do you want them to just, to just do it? Um, and then again, you can really incorporate some good early finishers in this activity. Um, if they finish it, go okay, go back and actually solve all of the all of the problems. Um, do the what is what is negative two minus a negative two um, in two different ways, that sort of thing. Um, so you can do it a couple different ways. Um, and so then we can include the directions. And then the last thing I want to show you is how we can duplicate this slide and then show our answer key. So then what we can do is just in, um, insert a shape and then I'm going to just make this colored and then I'm going to just make it match what I've been doing oops I'm doing here no outline and then um however this goes so So then that would be how I would create the answer key as well if I wanted to include that. So now that we have this, what I'm going to go ahead and show you in the next video is how we can take um, our, our basic template and make it interactive on Google Slides. So let me know if you have any questions at all. Leave them down below. Let me know if there's anything else you might want to see. Um, and then I will also post the template of our maze just on Teachers Pay Teachers if you want to just download that or again you can always follow along with my videos and create your own resources along with me. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.